Hello booktube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Juan, I am just one reader and this time I want to recommend a book that really took me by surprise in such a positive way. Wellness by Nathan Hill. This book is, a, is an Oprah's book club pick for 2023. I never thought I would read something like this, uh, not just because of the Oprah sticker thing, just because it is a genre that I don't typically read. Like I was thinking, when was the last time that I ever read a contemporary, like really contemporary literary fiction, like general fiction kind of novel? And I just can't really think of a, the last time that I did so. Anyway, um, this book took me by surprise in terms of the genre, but also in terms of the sort of the, the journey that it took me in. Um, it was just great. It was great. This is not going to be like a proper, really in-depth, well thought out, planned review. So if you're looking for like an in-depth review and analysis of the book, this is not the video for you. These are just my thoughts, my spoiler free thoughts on the book and why I think I want to recommend this to pretty much anyone. I think this is a book that I would recommend to a variety of different readers. Um, okay, so this book, I the rating. My rating is going to be four stars out of five, which is a really high rating. If you know me, you will know that I only give five stars to books that tickle like a very specific uh, thing for me. Like those are like one personal books, you know? Um, any other book that is excellent, I give them four stars. And that's the case for Wellness by Nathan Hill. It's a four star book, it's a great book. It's maybe not like one of my favorite books of all time. That's why I am not giving it the full five star rating, but suffice it to say this book deserves to be read. This book, okay, so when I first started reading this book, I almost DNF'd it. I actually considered putting it down or putting it back on the shelf and maybe coming to it, uh, you know, later on, just, you know, yeah, I wasn't really sure. Why? Because the book starts with a chapter or like a section where we just follow two characters getting to know each other and falling in love in Chicago. And that part of the book just sort of made me think is this book gonna be like a romance or like a story about a marriage? Um, I don't know, I just, I wasn't really clicking with the vibe of the book and I thought, oh no, I'm gonna read 600 pages of this? Oh my God. So I almost DNF'd it. Then the book just sort of did a lot of different things um, after that in the following sections. That doesn't mean to say that the book is like, outlandish or like, you know, that it does like f fantastical things or, or risque things. No, it's actually a very, like I said, it's a very uh, contemporary general literary fiction novel about a marriage. Yes, that, that part is true, but it's so well written. It's so interesting. It's so funny. It's so horrifying and so true and just so contemporary. I loved it. I loved reading a book that is talking about today, like today and yesterday and probably tomorrow. Like it's one of the most contemporary books that I've ever read in my life. Um, it's essentially, if I had to give you a, a quick synopsis of what the book is about without spoiling anything away, although this is not really a spoiler, spoilerable kind of book. Um, I would say this, this does follow the story of a married couple and how they meet and what happens in their marriage and, you know, the ups and downs of that kind of uh, married life and uh, parenthood and all of that. But it is about so much more than just that. We also get to see their childhoods. We get to see their family history, um, their individual family histories and we get to see just a bunch of characters and a bunch of situations that are just kind of darkly funny, just hilarious and ominous and just so real. And again, so contemporary, this book will speak 
loads to every reader because there's no way this book won't speak to you about something in your life. And um, yeah, that really touched me. Yeah, it was, it was great. So uh, this book is really about belief. In my opinion, that's the central thesis of the book. It's a book about belief. It's a book about, uh, in, in a way, it's about this kind of faith, almost religious faith that humanity has survived on. And uh, that's what keeps us going because, you know, the only thing that, se- that keeps us from falling into the deepest anxieties of death and um, doom and uh, annihilation is faith. Faith not necessarily, I'm, I'm not meaning, I don't want to say faith in like a religious sense, uh, but you know, we put our belief and our faith in whatever. I mean, for example, this morning I just had a great, great time with my coffee ritual and my Earl Grey tea and my special coffee and the way that I brew the coffee and the way that I brew the tea and those kind of little things in my personal life, those rituals give meaning. And uh, that doesn't mean to say that coffee and tea, like the actual ingredients, will necessarily make my life different, although they have you know properties and whatever. But it's, it's like this book talks a lot about those things that we put energy like mental emotional energy into and i think it's a book about creation not divine creation because nonsense but rather human creation you you know god is created by humans it's a it's one of those fictions that we have created as a society and as a civilization and as a species so it's about you know the, the 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 ability and the necessity of the human mind to create, find meaning in whatever, wherever we can and in whatever ways we can, uh, find meaning and when we cannot find meaning, we create meaning. And sometimes that's delusional and sometimes that can be pathological. Um, but that's also the, the only thing that we have that keeps us from being just animals, you know? finding and creating meaning with our minds, our emotional minds, not cognitive minds, but our emotional minds. Something that I loved about this book was the ending. The ending was just wonderful. I'm not gonna spoil anything, of course, but there, there's a couple of things that the author did at the end where ah, you just get this feeling of collapse and you, you realize that everything is made up. Like this is a profoundly nihilistic but but true book in terms of everything is made up. Everything comes from our emotional, primitive, childlike emotional necessities and anxieties and the way that we cope with the world and with the horror that is being alive. Uh, when we sort of create meaning in, in uh, wherever we can, that's where we find happiness and we find the, the will and the meaning of life. Um, that sounds incredibly Freudian and I am a psychoanalyst myself and yeah, this book was incredibly psychoanalytical. Even though this book doesn't really mention the psychoanalysis at all, this is a profoundly psychoanalytical book in my opinion because it really talks about the mind's ability to create and the mind's necessity to cope with life in whatever way it can. Um, So yeah, this book just tickled a lot of really great like urges uh, for me as a reader. I really, really loved it. Um, (laughs) The book is called Wellness and there is a big, big part of the book that talks about this kind of weird craze that as a society, especially American society, I mean, Mexi- my society, Mexican society, is very much dictated in certain ways by American society. So I felt like this book also resonated a lot with me and it talked to me. But this really is more of a Western Americanized lifestyle that is very crazy. 
in terms of it's very schizoparanoid, that, that's a psychoanalytical term, it's very schizoparanoid and narcissistic, therefore cancel culture, but also this necessity for like positive thinking. And it's, there's a, a section in this book that is so hilarious because it's so ridiculous the way that it satirizes this kind of positive vibes only, hashtag blessed kind of um, ideology that is so full of bullshit. And it's schizoparanoid, it's incredibly narcissistic and delusional, and a little borderline psychotic, <laughs> if we really think about it. <laughs> but it's, you know, every, it, it's, ah, I can't, I can't even properly articulate how funny it was, because it's a satire on things that we do every day. Like, I take supplements every day. I take pills every day, like, for my hair. Like, I take pills for my hair, for example. Um, I do my rituals with my coffee and my tea in my special mug from West Elm or CB2. Like, I have certain things in my home that give me that kind of feeling of, of, yeah, I've made it in life, you know? And those are things that are, of course, influenced by marketing and capitalism and big corporations and people who just want my money. I know that, but still, I, that doesn't mean that those things don't give my life meaning or happiness, if you will, or wellness. That's the title of the book for a reason how to be well, how to live well, those are questions at the core of this novel. And the book is just, again, I'm I know I'm sounding repetitive, I'm gonna wrap it up, but this book really pokes, pokes fun, pokes a, 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 like an evaluating judgmental finger to this wellness culture that we, that we live and that we are a part of. There's no way you are not influenced by this wellness craze that is going on around us every single day because that's the system, that's the way that we live. And it's very hard to sort of uh, ostracize yourself from that system. But when you really think about it, it's nonsense. And it's about belief and it's about wanting to create meaning out of nothing. <laughs> Um, and it's something that we all do. And if you don't do it, then where do you find meaning? Where do you create meaning, rather? That's a question that I think is interesting um, that this book has made me think of. Um, this book also has interesting drama, interesting gossip. You know, it has some mysteries to it. It has some, like, really action-packed sequences. It also has a uh, dialogue that is pretty interesting and pretty funny. The funniest part of the book where I was actually laughing my ass off was a part where there two people are having this really interesting like conversation, like very deep and meaningful, almost like a therapy session. And one of them is like, wait, are you like a therapist or something? And the other one answers, no, I'm in crypto. <laughs> This book is just funny like that. It just sort of gives you these weird lines out of nowhere. I just loved the humor in the book, but it's also also pretty heartfelt. And the ending is pretty heartfelt as well. Now, in terms of the structure, I'm just gonna say, I did find the book to lack a sense of pace. Like it was a book that it's 600 pages long and it took me over two weeks to read, which is not normal for me. Usually a book of this length would take me like a week. The problem, not a problem, but the, the thing with this book is it's told through vignettes and sections and every chapter is made of like sections and vignettes. And it, it really, it's a great book in terms of you get to see the, the lives of these people and you really get to see uh, a lot of fragments that make up these people. But as a story in terms of having a sense of pace, I thought it was a little stilted and a little slow for my personal taste. However, I still enjoyed every single second that I read this book, except for the beginning, because at the beginning I just, I didn't know what to expect and I thought, oh no, this is gonna be like a contemporary, romantic novel, no thank you, please don't. But no, it actually was much more than that. Um, 
So yeah, I really love that. In terms of the things that I didn't really like about the book, uh, other than the pacing, I would say it is a book that has a lot of a lot of telling instead of showing like one of the the rules of good writing according to i don't know the gods of writing or whatever is show don't tell and this book sort of actually tells much more than it shows like what does that mean there are entire passages of this book where you you know you are fully aware that what you're reading is not necessarily a story, but rather what the author is trying to convey like as a message. And it at sometimes, this is not a problem. I actually enjoyed it, but it does feel like the author is like speaking to you, the reader, like giving you like philosophical notions or uh, explain, scientific explanations of stuff and, and giving you information. So sometimes it does feel like it strays from the rules of fiction in a way but i had no problem with that i actually like when an author is brave enough to just go and tell you something uh and uh and prove a point and this is a book that makes a lot of points and proves a lot of points and makes a lot of statements that i think are pretty relevant uh this book i think would be really well paired with the TV show uh, Beef from Netflix, which actually won a lot of Emmys um, this this season. Beef, which is this kind of story about wellness culture in Los Angeles and these people. And if you haven't seen that show, it's a great show. And I think it's a perfect pairing uh, to, to, uh, to watch along with uh, reading Wellness by Nathan Hill. I just thought it was it was like very similarly talking about the same themes in in different ways in different genres but yeah I, I really think these two go well together so um, that's my not really review just some of my thoughts on wellness I want to recommend it because it is a great book I think more people should be talking about this book I think uh, at some point, this book will be adapted into a movie or a show or something. I, I just, I can see it, you know? And the last thing I wanna say before I wrap this video up finally is, as a psychoanalyst myself, reading this kind of thing makes me so proud and so full of gratitude for having chosen psychoanalysis as a way of life, as a personal philosophy, but also as a job. Because something, psychoanalysis really is just finding meaning and helping the patient, the person lying on the couch to find meaning and to create new meaning wherever there is no meaning to be found. And uh, that sounds very like weird, but it, it really is just a, a lovely, uh, wonderful human, uh, empathetic thing, psychoanalysis. And, Reading this book made me so happy to be a psychoanalyst because it's a it's a personal philosophy that makes me so happy and so it makes my life feel so meaningful and so worth living. And when I have a patient at my office lying on the couch or you know sitting uh, in front of me or whatever, that's what I'm constantly trying to to do. That's my aim to help people find that meaning and sort of like uh, understand the ob obstacles or defenses that each individual in particular, because of their family histories and their personal histories have uh, that are keeping them from finding and creating new meaning. So reading this book is just like a, uh, yeah, this is why I'm a psychoanalyst because people need psychoanalysis in their lives. Um, they, they really need that, especially in cultures like this. Um, also, if you haven't seen the TV show um, Pretend It's a City on Netflix, the Frank Libowitz, is it Frank? Frank Frankie Libowitz, Pretend It's a City, it's on Netflix. It, it speaks so much about the same topics that this book speaks about in a, in a very different kind of humoristic, acidic way. That's one of the best shows I've seen in my life, Pretend It's a City.
yeah, on Netflix. That's great. That's another great pairing uh, with this book. Anyway, thanks for watching. I am just one reader. If you have read this wonderful book, tell me, tell me and what you thought of it. I am giving it four stars, but I am pretty sure I will put it in my top 10 at the end of the year because it was great.